Hi, my name is Rick Michael Coprada, and on the internet, I also go by the handle as Records. I am primarily an illustrator slash animator, and I have been in the gaming industry as a 2D animator for about 4 years. And this is the kind of art that I do. And here's a short video reel of my animations. I sure hope that you like what you saw, cause this being virtual and all, frankly I can't see your faces. Before we continue with the motive for today's talk, first I'd like to give a short detour and share my history a little bit. I am a graduate of CSB or College of St. Benilde. And right after graduating, I didn't take a break but immediately tried dipping my toes into the real world and looked for a job. I didn't find any. But I always wanted to be part of the gaming industry. But first, I had to get my foot in the door. And thankfully in 2016, I was hired as an intern in Monstronauts. They are an indie mobile game development company with their main IP being Potion Punch. And it was fun working for them. I was given a few characters to animate and to be creative with for a while. And as the internship concluded, that's when I was hired in Secret Six. So what is Secret Six? Secret Six is a veteran game development studio based in San Francisco, Manila, and Madrid. We specialize in 3D art for AAA titles, 2D art, and full game production across all platforms. And these are our clients. And some of the games we have worked on are The Last of Us, Uncharted 2, 3, and 4, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Yu-Gi-Oh! Dual Generations, and the most recently, The Last of Us 2. And in my stay at Secret 6, I'd say the majority of my projects have been with Pocket Gems, mainly known for their game named Episodes. I think it's safe to say that at least once you've come across our ads. So yeah, we are the ones responsible for the animated ads that you end up skipping anyways. Another project I've worked on is Project Sandata. Project Sandata is a skill-based, team-focused, competitive 3v3 first-person shooter. And now we're all caught up. So, as creatives, getting into the art scene can be quite daunting. In order to stand out amongst the plethora of other artists could feel like creating your own splash in the middle of an ocean storm. But I tell you now that it doesn't have to be. You are unique and you have your own experiences and it is vital in every artist's journey to be able to share their own story. The key distinguishing factor between you and other artists is your personal brand. So, as an artist, whether you know it or not, you are your own brand. So, the purpose of my talk today is the importance of establishing your personal branding as an artist. Admittedly, this is quite a broad topic to discuss. But I hope by the end of this talk, you would have a deeper understanding of what personal branding is for us artists and how to take actionable steps into developing your own. So in order for us to be on the same page, we first have to define, so what is personal branding? But before that, I'd like to clear up one misconception first, which is art style and branding. Because most of the time when the topic of personal branding is discussed, usually the thing that people point out or think of is art style. But in reality, the two are separate entities. They actually go hand in hand and could also be interchangeable. Which means your style can be your brand and your brand could be your style. But they are still separate things. 
to give some examples. When I show you these drawings, do you know who is it from? Do you recognize any of these? For those who aren't familiar. So the first one is Little Things PH by Ivory Rosario, also known as Erangotify. Little Things PH is a comic series generally about the little things in the life of an unnamed boy and girl. For the comic, her style is her brand. The aesthetic of cute chibi characters, cute relationship moments, her style and humor in her stories are the main focus of her comic brand. Next up is Angelo Soqueño, or more commonly known as Aeonix. As for him, his personal brand is his style. Known for his amazing painterly style, realistic backgrounds that are usually set in the Philippines, and moody atmosphere. And if you look at his art station page, his focus is more on the melancholic and nostalgic feeling. As if the stories told in his drawings are bittersweet and have already passed. And the pictures we see now are his memories. And thirdly, relating back to my own art, my style is I am fascinated by the use of colors and its ability to be eye-catching. I incorporate them in my characters, utilizing the use of vibrant hues that pop out, or inversely, the selective use of it in order to highlight the important parts. But for my personal brand, I have this imagery of boba milk tea. And it's even part of my bio in my social media pages. And it's simply because I love the drink. And it's such a huge part of my identity that I incorporate it in my own descriptions. So to put it simply, branding serves as your identity as an artist as seen by others. And the reason it's so important, it's because you will need branding recognition in order to stand out and for others to recall your work towards your name. And so the defining factors of personal branding is twofold. The first one is internal, meaning your personal brand as an artist is the blend of your work, your artistic drive, and personality. Because branding isn't just about the product, it is a reflection of who you are and who you are willing to share with the world. It is the combination of both what you do and who you are as an art professional. And the second half is external, meaning it is the collection of the experiences, knowledge, and what impressions other people have about you and your work. It is the emotional reaction that people associate with you and your art. So to completely drive the point down, I want to share a final example. Here taking a look at Pascal Campion. I hope that you're aware of his name, or at least seen one of his works, because aside from having an incredibly recognizable style, his art is usually about stories. Stories about love, family, life, precious moments, and the like. And coupled with his smooth, vivid painterly art style, it provokes a feeling in every art piece. Feelings of wonder, peace, vastness, mindfulness, and that is his brand. For because every brand has a story, and you have a choice. To let someone write your story for you, because eventually they will, or write your own story. You just need to make sure to tie the story of your brand to your values and what you stand for. You are your own brand. So the next step is how? How do I build my own brand? To put it simply, personal branding is yours to define. It is anything that you want it to be. It is your voice, your ideations, your interests, your philosophy, anything. It is up to you. Now that you have an idea on what your brand will be about, the next step is going to be finding your style. Because, as I've discussed, style is the aesthetic and technique of your work. It is your way of presenting your vision for the art piece. Or in other words, 
it is the visual aspect of your branding. And that plays a huge role in your artistic identity. And so, how do we develop it? Now that part's tricky. Art is so subjective and there are no set rules. There are a multitude of ways to find your style. Everybody's journey is different. Everyone's experiences are unique. And this is what makes art so vast. But usually, the first part to finding your art style is to absorb. Just to name a few that work for me, you can do extra workshops, learning from tutorials, and going to talks like Grafica Manila or Icon Manila. Because at this stage, you are exposing yourself and making use of all the available resources to you. By listening to other artists that you take inspiration from, so like learning from their mistakes, listening to their story, witnessing their techniques, knowing what's achievable and possible options for you. Because at this stage, you are taking in from the sources who have already gone through their journey. However, watching others will only get you so far. It is only just half of the puzzle. Because at the end of the day, it will always boil down to one thing. And it is to apply. You are gonna have to do the work. So you're gonna use all that you have taken in and start applying. And as for me, I did lots of drawings and experimentations. For example, here is a summary of what I did for the past two years. I kept on iterating, picking out and testing new things that I could add or take away. This helped me sharpen and develop my technical skills, and more importantly, it helped keep things fresh and fun. Because personally, I get really bored easily. And the fear of stagnation is what drove me to keep on experimenting and honing my craft. So I looked up art inspirations and learned from their style. I took bits and pieces of art styles from different artists that I liked and incorporated it into my own. And that's how I learned. I had this quote when I was in college. I got it from my art coach in one of the workshops I was part of. It stated as, when searching for your own voice, we often find ourselves sounding like other people first. So this means that it's okay to quote-unquote copy or incorporate art styles that you like, because eventually it will mold into something that you will identify with. And just to remind you that you don't have to do what I did, this is part of my journey, and what worked for me may not necessarily work for you. It is up to you to figure out which works best for you. So now let's say that you're equipped with the tools of personal branding. You have the technical skills, you now know what you want to create. What's left is to share it with the world. In other words, marketing you. But today mainly focusing on social media. Social media is an amazing marketing tool. Especially now, in the digital age where everything is in the cloud. And the majority of people are connected to the internet one way or the other. Since it is such a strong platform for putting out your work and sharing it out to the world, it can also be a great place to build your portfolio. Aside from ArtStation and Behance, even your Twitter and Instagram can be used as your portfolio. However, there are things to be mindful of when it comes to posting in social media. For example, there are times when employers would even view your Twitter for background checking. Yeah, this is becoming a more common practice when hiring new employees at this age. Because this is to check if you as a whole is something they can associate with. And this is why branding is more than just about your work. So now that you're in social media and you've opened your browser, so what's next? It is to find a place to put my works. In other words, a platform. There are a plethora of websites where you can post your work. And it's important to be selective about where you would be placing your art. Something to keep in mind is there are different demographics and audiences for each social media platform. 
So what works well in one website may not necessarily mean it's excelling in another. What garnered a lot of likes in Instagram may not be on the same level as in Facebook. But it is always possible. As for me, I am mostly active on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And those three are where I am most comfortable with and find the most engagement with my style of art. Now that you have a place to put your art, the next step is going to be building your community. Because as you continue posting in your art accounts, you'll soon notice that people are starting to find out and follow your work. And this is a good sign. However, this will not be enough. It's important that you also maximize your chances for getting people to find your work. So the next step is discovery or getting your audience to find you. One way I have noticed that to boost your chances for other people to find your art is sometimes through art trends or fan art. Especially for those who are just starting in this whole social media thing, tapping into what's popular can help widen your reach and thus having your audience find you. Examples of art trends would be six fan arts. In here, the artists usually post the question in their social medias and then pick out from the post's comments the following characters they would draw. Another would be the Sailor Moon redraw. It is technically a redraw challenge, similar to the draw this in your style trend, but with a given screenshot from the animated series Sailor Moon. Here is an example of what I did. I combined following a trend and doing fan art in one project. The trend I followed here was Buonawika. Since August is the Buonawika, I thought to myself that in order to give homage and importance to our culture, I wanted to give spotlight to the music artists that bring honor to our language with their songs. So I posted one band or artist per day for the entire month of August, resulting in 31 artists in total and a little extra on the end. And speaking of fan art, even the most popular artists do it. And on top of that, there are artists who do fan art as their branding. One example of this is Stanley Lau, or more commonly known as Art Germ. Art Germ also works as an art teacher. He posts his sketches in his social media, and usually the characters that he draws are suggested by his students or his fans. In other words, he makes use of fan art as a way to connect and deepen his relationship with his fans. Interestingly, let's take another example. Let's take a look at Sakimi-chan. Similar to Art Germ, the majority of her content is fan art. However, it's for a different purpose. Her art style is absolutely recognizable and she has a huge following. And setting all controversies aside, she has very strong branding. So it's possible that we're doing the same things but still have different branding. So the next step to your social media experience will be engagement. Because as you gain more followers, it's crucial to show love to them. Because you know that amazing feeling when an artist that you admire replies to your comment. Interaction with social media audiences also plays an important role in making a successful art brand. Every follower counts. And the engagement to your audience shows that you care about the people who respect your work. By reaching out to your audience, you are building an army of faithful followers for your art brand. And lastly, collaboration. Because no man is an island, especially in social media. Having tie-ins with other creatives creates more marketing opportunities for both parties. Let's take Ross Tran as an example. He's an illustrator, and he also creates art content in his YouTube channel. And oftentimes, he collaborates with other creatives to serve as guests in his videos. For example, he had this one collab video with Lily Pichu. She is a content creator in Twitch, which is another social media platform, and thus creates a cross-platform marketing. Another collab would be is with Pamela Horton, or the voice actress of Bayonetta. 
She is a character in a popular video game of the same name. And for the video, Ross had her make interesting faces for him to draw. So what happens is, the audience of other creatives will then be introduced to your content and vice versa, creating a cross-platform boost for both parties. And if the audience also likes your content, then say hello to more of your community followers. A more timely example would be the rise of Corpse Husband. I'm unsure if you've heard of him, but his rise to popularity this year is amazing. I was a huge fan of his way before he started playing games and posting music. He used to be a horror story time narrator in YouTube at around 750k subscribers. But the day he started playing games, like Among Us and collaborated with huge Twitch streamers such as Pokimane, Lily Pichu, This Guy's Toast, Saikuno, and the rest. And on top of that, adding in some of the biggest YouTubers such as PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, and MrBeast, it benefited all of them. More people started to watch, more subscribers, more engagement, the memes, all helped boost their fan base and their supporters. And now within a year, Corpses now has 5 million subscribers and it's still going up. So yeah, that's the power of collaboration. <laughs> so to quickly summarize the social media aspect of marketing, it is divided into four. Platform or where you would place your art. Second is discovery or getting your audience to find you. And the third is engagement. It is the interaction between you and your audience. And lastly, collaboration. It is about building good network and having good associations with other creatives. And the last thing to add in social media will be consistency, consistency, consistency. Because in social media, it is only through consistency that you prosper. It is not just a one-time deal. Having the perseverance to keep on adding value to your community is key to having a strong media presence. But this doesn't mean that you should be posting every single day. I mean, there are artists who are capable of doing this, but it shouldn't be the standard. Every artist is different, and overworking yourself will risk yourself for burnout and health problems. So it's imperative that you find a good balance in the rate you're comfortable posting your art. And as you keep this in mind and continue to flourish your media presence, this will open up more opportunities for you. Aside from all the technicalities, the rules, the guidelines to follow, I reckon I need to bring light to the usually unspoken part of figuring out your personal branding or at least art in general. Which is the mental aspect to it. Cause you know, being an artist is tough. It's not easy. In your journey, you will feel the full spectrum of emotions. Expect that there will be days of frustration, days of unworthiness, burnout, days where you get stuck or your plans not working out, or the feeling of being a failure. But I implore you that you will need to have patience. You're gonna have to think long term. Art is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It is a continuous process of self-realization and development. Forgive yourself for your past mistakes and failures. It's okay if you don't have the art style or the personal branding, or even if you don't have anything of the things I discussed up to this point. It's okay. It will come. As long as you persevere and keep on doing it. Next is for you to have courage. Be courageous enough in trying out new things. Have the courage to allow yourself to be creative to widen your horizons. This is why in my example, I kept on experimenting. I kept on iterating. I harbor this mentality that I have so much to catch up to. And this is not born out of fear, but out of courage. It is the belief that I am capable of doing something great. And this is because I only started drawing when I was in my first year of college. I wasn't the star child that started drawing when I was a wee lad. Yes, 
This is me in college where I felt like an alien towards my classmates and teachers. I was like a mere mortal in the midst of gods and deities. I really felt the reality dawning down on me that I had so much work to do. To give you an example, I'd like to share the best art I had starting up in college. Here, you know, I was proud of this. Back in the day, I felt like, ah, oh, I was so good at it. But seeing this now, yeah, it's just mostly cringe. So if your art now looks so much better than mine, then I have good news for you, my friend. You already have the advantage. But yeah, this is what I meant by having both patience and courage. Even though I have reached a certain level of success in my brand, my journey is far from over. I still have so much more to learn and improve on as I continue moving forward. So as there will be days of frustration, there will also be days of happiness, relief, and celebration. It will only make your days of victory much sweeter when you know you worked hard for it. As for my key takeaways, number one is your personal brand is yours to build meaning the responsibility is yours and only yours. As for number two, it is to share, collab, and expand. This means to find your platform, share your work, collaborate with your community, and expand your network. And for number three will be patience and courage. Don't rush, take your time. And in order to grow, you will need to be brave. And as for the last one is consistency. This just means to do all of the previous steps, then rinse and repeat. Hi, thank you so much for listening to my talk. I hope you learned something new today. And if you enjoyed my content, feel free to follow me on my social media. That's Rico Arts, and thank you so much and have a nice day.